A bit of music and song in the second half, we're going to have a wee break just now, but just before we do, we've done this a couple of times in Edinburgh and once in Glasgow, but this is a very special night for us because the man who's made it all happen, the man who did that amazing thing over 50 years is with us as our special guest tonight. So please, it's a very good night. folk singer originally from the northeast of Scotland, but who, as many of you will know, has spent most of his life just down the road in Pitlochry. Between the 1930s and 1980s, Jock sought out and interviewed around 60 veterans of the First World War, representing many of the Scottish regiments, but with a particular focus on the Gordon Highlanders of his native northeast, and with plenty of representation from local regiments here in Perthshire, such as the Black Watch and the Athol Regiment, the Scottish Horse. The following play is based largely on these men's stories told to Jock in their own exact words. The cast is Scott Gardner, Chris Wright, Charlie West and Gary West, and the setting is a kitchen somewhere in Scotland in the present day. Here's a wee song. I just did one. Another one? Okay. Uh, which one again? Coffee bar. Okay. Uh, Against? Ah, no. Okay. Are you going to join it? Cool. Well, if this is me a song of love, now he had the song of money. Faith, it's nothing very beautiful, it's nothing very funny. For there's human scotch and woolen scotch, and butter scotch and honey. If there's none of them for all, there's a mixture of the three. And there's never the beef brew, sour soddy bags, nor our pancakes, peas eggs, for them in the stomachs. It's all about the meal and ale that happened at Bull Mags, making these meal and ale for the picket on the spree. They were huddling, catch you like a caravan, think he's eyeing some of the pen pong and tiddly widdly winkies. But I'm doing that, you know, I saw such drinkies as making these meal and ale for the picket on the spree. New McGetty's pick had broken loose and wandered to the lobby, for he opened, shoved the pantry door and calm upon the toddy. And he do kindly take the stuff like on a human body, at McGetty's meal and ale, for the pick it on the spree. Miss McGetty, she come bend the house, the road was dark and crooked. She could heel star gouty out of the pig for it, she never looked it. And she would be a squirrel and a paralyzed that you could at McGetty's meal and ale. Father pick it on the spree. They were huddling in the kitchen like a caravan. They'd be signed somewhat with a big bomb and fiddly fiddly winkies. But I would think that I could get our sausage jinkies as many jinkies feel in the air. Father pick it on the spree. Well, leave it there, boys. That's the gaffer here, then. Thank you, my lady. Thank you, my lady. Thank you, thank you very much. Come tonight. Good missing entertainment of evening with you, fine gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> so, what's this uh, suspicious package you've got there? Oh, well, all will be revealed when you pour me a dram. A dram? You've been spending too much time with us old boys. You should be drinking. What do young folk drink? Cocktails or something? All right. Thanks, Barbara. Let like me you peruse your extensive offerings. Oh, let me see you'll have a, oh, a tea maria and Lucas Aid and, and a dash of lime on the side. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be getting milk, you don't watch your lip. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's scared of the pus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 a tune demands a wee dram there. Oh no, no. A, a dram demands a wee tune, that's what I meant to say. Right, so I'm going to tune, then we'll give you a dram. Right, okay. We've been at this for hours. <laughs>
Oh, what's, 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 what's the one for the one? <laughs> what's in there? You're getting a bit empty, boys. Nice. Lives. Lives? Aye, uh, lives. Lives and memories. Well, lives and deaths, I suppose. Bit of a long story, but my dad dropped this round to me the other week. He'd been sent by some publisher or somewhere. Apparently a guy called Jock Duncan spent years, well, decades, interviewing veterans of the First World War. He just seemed to have a fascination for it. George, the second. Ah, yes, one, yeah, yeah. He managed to uh, introduce um, about 60 of them to this. Uh, in the North East somewhere, you know, Buckingham and Asia, those sorts of places. Um, and he managed to trace my dad somehow to let them be published. Mm -hmm. So how come, why did they send it to my dad? Because one of the men to interview was my great grandfather. Um, they managed to trace my dad and so it was being published. And I thought maybe you boys might be interested since you're all from up that way, some of you not. No, at least, no, not really. <laughs> Dundee. <laughs> Middle East. Middle East. <laughs> well, we'll give it a go. The thing is, he's, he's, he's done it in dialects. So I thought you can get some of it, but maybe uh, we'd like to read out some of the stories and maybe get a feel of what the boys might sound like. Right, absolutely. What's So, uh, let me see your big hand. Which one is he in here? Promoted to sergeant on the song by his major, who drew three stripes in the arm and was trained with a blue pencil. Awarded military medal and wounded four times. Posted missing, presumed killed, after the great chairman pushed the 21st of March 1918, family informed. But survived and returned to take part in the second man with the 51st near Reeves. Oh, I, I, he is Alex McCarthy's seventh conference. And he says, And we marched to join the Battle of the Song it took 21 days. We fell out for ten minutes every year, just stop it, Anne, if you're sleeping just for the kid. And the cookhouse buyers keep it caught all the time, I ready to dish you the stew from the time cap. My God! For warrior never was seen, when I was young, my father said, he'd take me to a decent trade. But I didn't like that job at all. So I went and I joined the forty twa. The wind made blood and cock made car. The rain made rain and the snow made snow. But you went on a thriving chop my car. The sweetest chill in the forty twa. I do last back across the sea. The general he sent after me. And when I get there with my big gun, well, you can a battle soon was won. For a man like me, see so tall and neat. You can yourself never be beat Or the wind may blow, the cock may crow The rain may rain and the snow may snow But you win a frickin' jock, my girl The sea is chill in the forty floor The king then held a grand review We numbered a thousand and sixty-two The county lads come marching past The jock, my girl, he was marching last the royal party grabbed their sticks and all began to stray. The rain and the storm is storm, but you will have a frickin' chop, my girl. The sticks is chill in the forty twa. The wind may blow, the cock may crow. The rain may rain and the storm is storm, but you will have a frickin' chop, my girl. The sticks is chill in the forty twa. Page 46. Uh -huh. 46. See, there's a chapter in the here, see? And I might doing that in school, but I thought it was mainly the, the New Zealanders and the, the Australians that fought there. Ah, the Anzacs? Ah, they don't be sure, but there's plenty of jokes in this movie, you think. Here is up again! First King Tom's Scots Brothers! Fifth Royal Scots! 52nd London Division 155 Brigade! Fourth Royal Scots Fusilier! Fifth Royal Scots Fusilier! Fourth King Tom's Scottish Brothers! Fifth King Tom's Scottish Brothers! Fifth King Tom's Scottish Brothers! Fifth King Tom's Scottish Brothers! Right, I'm going to try this silly accent you boys are putting on. <coughs> silly accent? <laughs> Jim Smith, Royal Field Artillery, Tartillery, I can't even do it. <clears throat> Jim Smith, Royal Field Artillery, 29th Division. That's good so far. Thank you. Oh, yeah. The ship we did out to Egypt way was carried to Estonia. Aye, I mind that. And you had to walk the beast on about it for exercise. We disembarked at Alexandria and into camp. 
There we wait for the New Zealanders and the Australians to come for their own countries. When that happened, we get to our same ships and sail for Lemnus. I hear a fleet of them congregated there, and a load of battleships and all. And on the 24th of April, 1915, we set sails for the shores of Gallipoli. I mean, there was another fine neck. <laughs> So. The Australians were far north than us, but later on some of them come round to their side and attacked the Suzla Bay, along with some mere British troops, but they didn't get very far there either. The sick and wounded were taken and light as it left to the hospital ships, but the majority coming off for distant cases the most of the time. Hmm. Aye, the Turks had a nasty habit of firing their rifles picked up in the air and spent bullets and strach being on top of us, in fact. Well, there's a lot of effect that way. An officer came by when we were standing with a big Australian. We all saluted him, but the Australian didn't he? The officer stopped and got onto him for a nice salute. The Australian just looked at him and said, My life for a real soldier, sonny! <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've never been out of the bungle. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Right. Some of this, this talk of the Anzacs that makes me mind of this chase. You're kind of okay. Matilda, 
As he carried us down the gangway, nobody cheered. We just stood and stared. And then they all turned their faces away. And now, every April, I sit on my porch and watch the parade that passed before me. I see my old comrades and how proudly they march, reliving their dreams and their past glories. The old lads march slowly, all bowing stiff and sore. They're tired old heroes from a forgotten war. And the young folk ask, What are they marching for? And ask myself the same question. And the band plays waltzing Matilda, as the old men still answer the call. But year after year, their numbers grow fewer. And one day, no one will march there at all. Waltz in Matilda, Waltz in Matilda, who will come waltz in Matilda with me? And the ghost may be heard as you pass by the billabong. Who will come waltz in Matilda?
And it would have been nice to meet him right now. Do you know what just struck me? What was it about these men that set them apart from the rest? Timothy. They all came home. How did last one of these boys survive? Not survive, huh? Came from home surviving to tell a story. Mm -hmm. They say most men like them never share their stories with anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it took a pretty special man to get them to, get them to do that, eh? Right. Job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Need some bread, lads. You think if some ballast brutes here, here's the cardi, what a lot. What a lot, what a lot to record he was. He, he, he was a big hardy boy. They, they made him sergeant at 16. He, he again, it was his name when he joined up. 16. They made him sergeant because the, 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 the CO says, say that boy over here. McCarty says, you have come out of the drugs in your pencil. Could you join your pencil? And he got a uh, call up and said something, he wrote this three. Next week he come back and the father was still on the rocks. He didn't just think he didn't see it. The God man out of here, he says, Put the three stripes. Oh, I feel it. I've had another toast there to Doc Duncan, collector of stories. And so those boys, the boys who came home and the boys who didn't, the jocks, 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 jocks. jocks. I was working in Compartment once uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it was uh, nothing compared to the dark folk who throw in the dogs in the, in the wheat. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the wheat, the, the, the horses, speaking about the living girl, Schultz, Schultz was big for this. Gangs, you see, gangs, you see, we took the five years. And uh, that, that one described it perfectly. Because he was alone, you see. He 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 drove him down and it stayed a cat and he was expected to come out and but all they got was harness long down and the horses were gone. The horse size was out in the war to the war and then we come back for a cat. The the the, the rails rails come next. So it was still there, he also told me to have it. Grateful as to you. Great as to raise your community. Fantastic. Okay, I'm working on my own. Probably the shortest song that I know. It's also probably the, the closest song to where I grew up. Just, uh, just outside Forfa. Uh, the guy who wrote it had a smitty at a place called Clatter Ha. Which is uh, just beside the, the bridge over the, the South Eskett for And uh, I think it was added to by, there's a great character called Smokey Gray, I'm not sure if any of you have heard of him. He used to work for DC Thompson. He was the man who created Nasher, the uh, uh, Dennison and his dog. And he, he, was a, he was a very funny guy. And he, um, luckily, he, he had a sort of, uh, it's called the Cat's Cradle, just at Forfa, it was like a sort of, place where you put your animals if you were going away on holiday and all that sort of thing. And uh, he, he created this sort of show that we go around, that we go to the Angus show and various other shows, and it was this, basically you'd have, you'd have these ducks that you would kind of get a sheep dog and kind of run the ducks around and around and get them to do all sorts of stuff. So they were called the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> It's called the Ballad of Flecky Egg. <laughs> All Sandy Broom is tucked in bed, he couldn't sleep a van. He tossed and turned and asked his wife to give his bug a claw. <laughs> had up your sack, says Mary Jane, oh, had it up, says she. And I'll just hear a look about 
to see what I can see. So Sandy Hooket of his son, with money groans and pecks, and an all his summit was chock a block with flex. There was great big flex and little flex, and flex you couldn't have flag. There was flex with bales and flex with bales, a flag we a wooden leg. We had bandaged throat with a tie of wood clout and waited on an hospital bed to get his tonsils out. Sign Sandy saw the strangest sick the day he'd seen for weeks. For a teddy boy fled me a big shoe horn, slipping on his brakes. A monster fled, come on the scene, he toured the bin the mama. He'd muckle lumps and curly hair, and teeth just like a saw. He had been hiding in Sandy Sark since 1892, and he was gaining a look about to see what he could charm. Now Sandy's hardies, they were bare, the flag rose with the light, and sunk his teeth in Sandy's hunch, and gained a muckle bite. Now Sandy roared, but the flag hung in, till Sandy nearly grant. Say Mary took the rolling pin, and knocked the monster flat. All Sandy's feeling better new, they flex all his sack. But he's got lumps across his ribs, the flex have left a mark. He offers up a prayer each night, likewise his good wife Jane, that they'll be blessed as long as they'll live, and there he flex again. <laughs> This uh, programme was funded in uh, partly by Museums Gallery Scotland and <coughs> the rest of the funds were supplied by the museum themselves.
try and have a quick word with John. Thank you very much indeed for that amazing collection. It must have taken you, what, 50 years? 50 years or so? Oh, it was one lad of 14 in the Christmas truce. 14? Yes. And he joined the, the sea force, held us. He was already in the block watch territorials in Perth. And he, he says he went and back to his own folk. He's 14 years old, he went back up to join this force he was. And he was also in the great Christmas truce. <laughs> oh, he, he spoke a good, eloquently about it. In this song, the singer's pals were Andrew Carnegie. And uh, Andrew Carnegie's come to Dundee back from his American uh, empire to spend all of his money. He's, he's finally decided money is really interesting, so he's going to spend the whole lot at once getting drunk in Dundee. And the singer's his pals, so they're going to tear the town up with his millions of money. So, yeah, he's got chorus. And the chorus is. We have a million of money and da and da. We have a million of money and da and da. Can a baby and me get over, get over? We have a million of money and da and da. Andrew Carnegie. Oh, says Andrew Carnegie, take me, hey, day. I'm tired of my money for yints and away. So we'll go into the town on the banks of the Tay and we'll paint it red with a heaven hurry. For I've made up my mind to go on a spree and I need to get food in that tuna done be. And as nobody kens me there of us, so we'll go on the boost for a month or two. We are down in our money and da and da. We are down in our money and da and da. Can we can be here a while, get a while? We are down in our money and da and da. Who says Andre Carnegie to me, I'll pal, we'll spend the night at the Queen's Hotel. For we'll sit in carouse for a hour or two, then we'll sleep the and da So he hails a car, and away we go, a journey of two hundred yards or so. And to show the car he has had whiskey, he signs him a check for a thousand quid. We are going to do money and da and da. We are going to do money and da and da. Well, for a start, we drank the bodega dry, then we finished the buffy for by for by. Then I went to the cafe, we took a stop, then we drank for Stratton's of every drop. And when we finished the flowing bowl, we wandered our land to the metropole. But at 9 p.m., we were bait flung, we had ten that touched by the waiter's boot. We had the money and now and now, we had the money and now and now. Canadian, we get a walk, get a walk, we had the money and now and now. Now we went to Lentrath and all under me. That's the law that supplies the tuna dundee. And we emptied the water, say sweet and say clear. And we filled Lentrath and we basses beer. Oh, but sick a commotion it caused that days it flowed through the pipes to the tune on the teeth. Like a wife in her kitchen, we mask and her tea was as poo as a puggy and body. <laughs> <laughs> The jail and the truths who they envied all handling me as they huddled us through the streets of Dundee. But a million of money's a terrible sum, will we ever get through it in whiskey and rum? Ach, a wow, wow, says Andrew to me, we'll be done for a week and a month or two. We are a million of money and na and na, we are a million of money and na and na, Canadian me, get a wah, get a wah, we are a million of money and na. To the finish, poor big carouse, we drank the body to clean with the rules. And old Neddy Scunger stood aghast, thinking prohibition had come at last. <laughs> and we had the DTs for the fourteenth time. The man who found out, well, he had me a dime. <laughs> then I awoke, we are not a scream, and I found it was only a dream. <laughs> <laughs> we had the carouse. 
Nee, wel in de manier waar, waar. Ik kan niet vinden dat waar, waar. We have a money and now and now. We are covered in a money and now and now. We are covered in a money and now and now. We are spending some money and now and now. Aren't you coming in? Big, big, big shout for that. Oh, we're just we're standing here. We're we're standing out. Next thing he was blown up in the air, and London took it. They knocked himself out and took it. The bell box was. London head first with his dead heart. And when he came to, he crawled up and out and looked for his mate to hear them crying. And uh, he was mortally wounded. So he trailed them down a few hundred yards to the, through the mud and glare to the field station. And uh, shortly he, he, he waited to the, but he, he died. Uh, would you like? <laughs> 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 you want me to start the whole thing again? Yes, yes. Thanks for getting me in. Yeah, well, I can really, I'll, I'll really say that funny song. Okay. We've had quite a lot of serious stuff earlier in the first half, so. Um, and <laughs> it's a singing one by uh, a guy called Ian Middleton, who's a great songwriter from <laughs> just inside Bucky. <laughs> and so probably if you uh, break down in his sort of output of he had lots of poems and, and songs as well, and um, probably about maybe two thirds of them are sort of funny and you know, songs, and the rest, a lot of them are songs about farming, the change that he's seen in his, his days. So this is one from the first category, and it, it's about a guy whose uh, wife goes away for a few days, and he's a bit handless, and he's kind of left to, to fend for himself. So it's called the Dumbler. <laughs> Wolf and Jeez are the sister, Tina Dwami after me. Her man agreed she'd better go and see if it could be tea. So she pocket two or three thingies, and a case and half she get, leaving Wally to get on me, then to go by his fancy quid. When he rose the fallen morning and he bent the light of fire, he found the boon awkward with his marble spare tire. And he used a plastic toddy pail to put the cinders in, and it melted with a gush of reek that left him ticked to win. But in secret and conquered and sent down to his team, I am feeling new and bitter bone began to plan his day. He looked for an easy way, but inspiration came. He would map as big a dumpling as with less than Jean come here. He looked at their base and it would hide the stuff he knew it, and often it would boost its size. This dumpling got the lot. Well, the quantities required of each, he was a half a sure, but rather than be techy, I held in another stool. The result when steered together was a clarty grey cannot, and he shoved it in a pillar slip and stopped it in a pot. So he gave the soppy water, and he put it on the boil, deciding just to leave it to get on meat for a file. He left the lot of hugger and get bent to mark the bed, Nae fancy wise for Wally, just a quick throw up instead. And he flipped up the blankets till it loose, we suck a quaff. Then he cooked with a jean, put up pots and jars, all coloured stuff. And he put the day before the work, the dinner time to come. And all this time he thought about the appetising hum. Then he wafted through the kitchen door, when last he hit a look. The smell had fair given on his hair, t'was a credit to the cook. Dinner time had come at last, and in he get the dine. But the dumpling he'd imagined was a duff of a different kind. For the dollop that had swallowed so much, its girth had burst the clout, and in two or three different places half its guts was hanging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I thought it was gone, 
the swan and sicker speed, it was acting in ship in the pot with a lid perched in its heat. And even as he watched it still, the hickory it rose, till spotted lumps were sticking out like a springer spaniel's nose. He turned off the grass and get to lift the pot outside, but the hamlet was bright with the pudding being so wide. And he could not get a hood till he'd hack it off a dud. So while he did the quickest way, he skimmed it with a spud. <laughs> but he threw the surplus button to the collie in the close. It traveled through stiff legged and it guarded up his sauce. A bird spark its hair stood up as if to got in a flag. A sign of final insult as the dumb thing cocked its leg. He swallowed a little pot for left, he tried to eat himself. And he bid it three further times a day till he could have seen in hell. For he fried it and he stewed it and he had a call in him. And all of for a week was by, he was gonna to his men. The sector got them shudder every time he sat to dine, and he felt he'd hate a chandice that he reached its inner rhyme, though he swore that me another drop would ever reach his mood. And he kept it in the oar a pail and did it take the soon. You have a peely wally like, says Jean when she can sing. You'll know he made a diet new, I'll bet that's what's to blame. For God bear Meg was feeling you to let me hear the day. I'll just a one mark a body, don't blend it in a day. I remember Gordon used to say to me, I think my father's learning to type, because I hear him up in the bedroom with one finger at the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just to let you all know that we're working on publishing the book, um, the you. job's type, typed up, so it should be out uh, uh, hopefully well, uh, early, in, early in the new I year. So. It, I hope it is, because there's a lady, it always uh, bears born to a good year. And, uh, and uh, it was based on three times for different people out here. It was in 1947, in the New Year. And uh, she wanted us chopping the dead whale, the farm whale, and uh, they're tired to turf. And I saw them every year, and I went up to the festivals and that. And now, she, I see that her husband's died, and she's left, she's left herself, but she's quite happy, she says.
like we were saying in the play at the end there, you, it's usually said that the men in the First World War coming back didn't really speak to anybody about it. <laughs> you see, no, you managed, didn't, you managed didn't, to get them to open they up. They were quite eloquent in the end, during their old age. Yeah. Oh, um, well, uh, the uncle of mine was killed. He, he was transferred to machine gun corps, which they called the, the suicide squad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> He's, he was, uh, he, he volunteered for, <laughs> ready, ready for something. And uh, he came through Hollywood, but the way he survived that. But uh, he was uh, killed in a peculiar way, and uh, it didn't come out of uh, some of his mates wrote to somebody and told him it's home. They were digging a, a placement, you know, for the machine gun, a new placement, and his back hit the head of a shell. And the whole board to bets. That's, that's why he was in the early, early thing he died hard on was, was his watch. Yeah, just one more round of applause, please, just for the man who made it all possible. Drop <laughs>